Now, if you look at Nest and what it's done with its cameras and doorbell ringer and ring.com and look at the ring neighborhood community scenario where right. all the rings can be basically aggregated to say that if something bad happened in your neighborhood, it goes right back to the police. And right. You have Flick that right. also has that kind of capability. And that's all good, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we in our neighborhood have reduced dramatically the amount of stolen Amazon packages on front steps. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, all yeah. because of the amount of rings that are there. Right. And you know, once a thief gets caught doing this thing or a neighbor right. gets caught doing it and they're right. on camera and exposed, right. it's amazing how the social interaction right. works really well and go, right. oh, you know. That right. crazy lady down the block has right. been stealing our packages, and we right. bought her, and right. she's now in you right. know, in county. Right. So there's some goods to that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But then let's go on the bad side. One of the things about Nest thermostats, and I give this, I, I, I've said this in weird circles, in speeches that, you know, I've had people come running up to me and yelling at me. So... You're heavily into security. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm one of the questions I have for you at this for, right. uh, during this thing is going to be about privacy and security of the right. data that you right. have in your facilities. Right. But think about it from a Nest thermostat. We are entrusting who Google to be the source of security. Or are we investing in our my Xfinity mm-hmm. platform and router to be the security blocker of bad things that could happen? Because imagine if a hacker were to get into every Nest thermostat in the world Mm -hmm. and raise the temperature to 110 degrees in a home, Mm -hmm. and how many millions and millions and millions of people would come back really upset Mm -hmm. into their home to see that happen? And so are we one, and that's, that's, you know, if we look at the target breach that Mm -hmm. was done through an IoT air conditioning unit, so now what happens when a Nest thermostat gets hacked? which you got to believe eventually yeah. something like this is going sure. to happen. Uh, it's it's already happening, not yeah. on a more a larger public scale, right. but it's going to happen at some particular point. What does that mean? Does that mean right. that everybody's never going to buy another home automation product because there's a security breach there? So I think we have goods and bads about it. Mm-hmm. You know, tremendous savings for power. Georgia Power probably doesn't like me, mm-hmm. but I have reduced our home's usage of, of gas for heating the house this winter by hundreds of dollars mm-hmm. and a month. Mm-hmm. And so you start to look at those kind of economic benefits. What are, I know what I, what did I pay? $500 for three Nest thermostats on three right. levels. And it saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, over the period of time, the ROI was what a month. Right. So you, how can you beat that kind right. of stuff? And because I am a road warrior, I'm very concerned about security and, and my wife and, mm-hmm. and and everything that's going on in the neighborhood and the house. You know, I have it on my phone. Mm-hmm. If I have activity in the front door, activity in the rear, and, you know, in the back of the house with the infrared camera, whether that's rain, leaves, rodents, or birds, or anything else, right. it still goes off while I'm sitting in China, or right. I'm sitting in Puerto Rico, or right. someplace else on business. Right. So. Those you, are all Do you cool. have the ability to Mr. Microphone that so you Hell, can talk oh to? Oh, yeah, baby. That would be and so I'm much. And I scared the crap so out of people there. I get in so oh. much trouble. Oh, no. You know, back to, um, back to security yeah. uh, for a second about, about the edge devices. I guess I'm, you know, as I talk to my family and, and friends, when we're talking about um, consumer devices anyway, I keep reminding them it is not... Google's responsibility or the platform provider's responsibility to secure their devices any more than it is Netgear's responsibility. Why would you say that? Let me let me explain why. So if I go to the one of the big box stores and I buy Netgear, a, a Netgear box or whatever, D Link doesn't matter, um, comes with a username and a password. Right? It is my responsibility to, if I want security, to change the default password and to change the default username. 99% of the people that buy that thing don't. do not do that. <laughs> I don't know, and, if, it's, I don't know uh, if it's that. Well, it's pretty significant. It is. Uh, it is but I, I, let me just say for my personal sampling of friends and family, I can almost always know what their username is. And most of the time, some version of their password get pretty close to it. Unsophisticated, unscientific um, testing. Um, and then I have... Uh, three children 
uh, two of them college age with all of their devices and I can get pretty close to their passwords without, they're always so irritated. The other day we were, I was helping them do their taxes and, um, you know, they saw an email or two come and go. They're like, I think I've been hacked. I was like, you weren't hacked. I just completed this thing for you. And then I read it. How'd you know my email address or my email password? Well, I bet it was, and I gave them them, and they were just looked at me like it was magic. <laughs> no, because you have bad habits, and this is what people do. So, so um, I, I think that the platform does have a responsibility. So, for example, back to Target. Target has a responsibility to build a strong backend with jump networks and um, DMZs and all these other things, right? They have a uh, responsibility to vet vendors and to m ensure that vendors are connecting according to certain protocols, et cetera. Um, and then to test. But you don't think that a Linksys or a D Link has that responsibility? They have a certain responsibility. So, for example, I think that. Um, or Xfinity I, or, I, or I Comcast think, well, or. Back to the or, hardware or to Google or whoever, right? I think that Google has a responsibility that so long as. Um, if the credentials, if somebody gets a hold of the credentials, they, they no longer have an obligation. It's my responsibility to make sure that I operate the platform, the application, the hardware or whatever in a safe manner. So my county has a responsibility to make sure there's safe roads, that the lights work. The state has a responsibility to make sure we all operate under the same uh, rule set but I have an individual responsibility to make sure that I operate my car within the conditions of the road and within my skill level or whatever. And if I don't, well, then that's on me. I'm responsible for that behavior. And so um, we were talking offline. I got my laptop stolen not long ago. And, um, uh, you know, it's possible to still be vulnerable, but my hard drive is encrypted. My passwords are I use a hard password tool. I have a master password in a password tool that's 12 characters long that doesn't spell a word. It's, a, you know, it took me a while to master that password. But once I did, it controls all my other passwords. I can force logout sessions of my cloud sessions, um, et cetera. Is that HP's responsibility or Windows responsibility that if somebody gets a hold of my device that they can bypass my retina scan or my, you know, eight digit uh, Windows password, maybe some, but I think the responsibility in most cases is on the individual to make sure um, you educate yourself. You're connecting a device to a network where uh, it's not like we were using an example of grandma in Nebraska way back when. Probably grandmas in Nebraska, are ho hopefully they're listening to this and raise their fists at us. But um, I find many times that, uh, you know, the people that I don't think are going to be particularly sophisticated with this stuff, they really are because they didn't grow up in an era of it. So they're very cautious. Yeah. They either tend sure. to be wide open yeah. or very, Versus very our cautious. Kids. Versus our 20 something. My kids are spectacularly unconscious. And uh, care uh, less. It's I'm not like, going to happen to me. Your social media is not your diary. Don't be reporting that stuff. Don't tell you. First of all, you can't remove it. But you can also expose yourself to all these vulnerabilities, and it's you know. Come on, Dad, what are you kidding yeah, me? So, Seriously, you, know, you think that's uh, as my as my oldest said to me the other day, I'm part of the patriarchy. So I had to go look that Google. What that was that mean? <laughs> in, parent, uh, in parent terms. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, um, but anyway, just try but, to control. Okay, but do you do you use WEP and WPA and all the other tools that are associated with that? So, I think because it's so difficult. And it's not kiss oriented for the average consumer that kiss meaning keep it simple, right? Is that stupid? What stupid? <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir, sir, or madam. exactly. Yeah, uh, that I think we run into situations where consumers are not educated enough to be able to understand what they can here's do themselves. Think, so here's where I think the roles and responsibilities are. I think that it is my vendor's responsibility to provide, um, if they provide security protocols, to um, have an instruction on how to enable them. It's my responsibility in to the implement quick start them guide. in the quick start or wherever. And it's simple, you know, one of the things I like about GDPR that's come out is part yeah, of their is focus true. is, it's not just about your privacy or whatever, but in as simplest language as possible. I just got schooled about this by a buddy of mine from uh, Great Britain who's in that world. What we knew is when you click on for example, I use Gmail and I click on 
I agree. I don't, I haven't read, and I'm in this business. I'm not even a security person, but I know that buried in there are 800 things They give them the right. Why is it free? Because it's never free. Well, because I'm giving them by far the most valuable thing, which is data. And then they're going to monetize the data and they're going to do stuff with it. Not necessarily nefarious, but they're going to do stuff with the data, right? Mm -hmm. My responsibility to get educated. But many times I'm either in a hurry, a little bit of laziness or whatever, but I get confused. I don't want to be stupid. Who would I ask to explain that to me or whatever? And I do see that there are organizations now that are for the public good and in the public domain saying, in order to be GDPR or to be part of this, you have to explain in much simpler terms, a person who's not a technologist, what are you giving away and how can you reclaim it should you want it back, your own data sovereignty, and how can you take it? And I think that's going to be a huge push. But it is the responsibility, if I go buy that car, to learn how this, does it have a spare tire? Do, how, how do I do the spare tire? Is that, the, is that um, other than putting it in the guide, in the owner's manual, is that the Ford or Honda or you know, whoever's, Lexus's responsibility to cha- show me how to change a tire and to do all that or to make it available to me? If I go to change my tire and I break the jack or the tire doesn't work or whatever, or I... But if I'm doing it on the side of the road unsafely and I get hurt, I, it's that's not where the, it's I'm not, not the manufacturer's sure. fault. Not necessarily. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm trying to figure out if you could show the only way you could do this tire was to kneel on oncoming traffic and there's no other way to do this. And so there's some culpability and you should know how to design this better. Maybe. But back to you, you referenced the target breach. It got breached. Because it's like how planes crash. You and I are on planes all the time. We all like to talk this. But one of the things that I take comfort in is, especially in the commercial world, it takes a dozen things, usually two or three different types of human error for a plane to crash. It's generally not a thing. We have multiple pilots, all this other stuff. With the target thing, it was one, it was connected into the wrong network. They bypassed their physical security stuff as I understand it. And so that's the responsibility of the target and, the, and their IT team, and they paid for it accordingly to make sure you connect the right way. But the second was the people who use the device, they also had responsibility to make sure their device was secure. Right. I don't even think they had a username and password on it, if I remember correctly, that's but correct. whatever it was, it was one, you breached, and two, you left it vulnerable. I heard they, that somebody did this with a casino they had a fish that, tank, that, and they that, put that, a router on the that, tank, that, and they bat, you know. That's right. Hey, that you know. Was, that was recent. Early days of, of networking back in, again, not a network guru, but used to design um, cloud and manage hosting, whatever. And you had to make your drawing to show how everything was connected. And if, you know, you had a physical connection coming from one thing to yeah. your DMZ or whatever. Yeah, you had. Hmm, that was a problem. Yeah, exactly. But it was a response. It was a yeah, shared but, responsibility, but they, I think. Just if I... This morning, watching CNBC early this morning, uh-huh. and here's a Comcast business commercial come on. Uh-huh. And Internet of Things is there as long as, as well as data and voice and everything else because Comcast Xfinity sells you this package. Okay. Well, I'm paying 200 and something dollars a month, which is way too much. Yeah. $200. Shouldn't it be that since they are demarking, they are in my home with their box. Yeah. that I pay for every month, Yeah, which, shouldn't that be secure from that box through the internet? What so, do you mean by secure? Meaning that malware, any kind of virus protection, everything else that can come into my Wi-Fi routing system network in mm-hmm. that home, which would then affect the Nest thermostat, it affects the cameras, yep. it affects the lock, affects the garage door openers, everything else. Where does their responsibility lie within that since their box is on their line that I pay for in a rental agreement, Mm -hmm. shouldn't it be on their dime? Shouldn't they have the controls in there? Why should I have to go buy a Cujo or another external security gateway box in my home 